Welcome back to Daily Devotions from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andrew Howe. It's a joy to be here uh, with you again uh, today, as this week we are talking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, we are uh, taking a close look at uh, the six chief parts of Luther's small catechism. We are coming to the end of the sixth and final uh, chief part, and we're discussing the sacrament of the altar as it's laid out in the small catechism. Uh, generally, we call it the Lord's Supper uh, in, in our congregation. Um, the other uses of the phrase are either the sacrament of the altar, uh, the Eucharist, which comes from the Greek word thanksgiving, um, the breaking of the bread probably can be generated from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Um, and uh, the Lord's table is often another, another phrase as to be used. Holy communion uh, is another alternate uh, form. Uh, today we're going to take a look at what benefits does communion give us. We already talked a little bit yesterday about what it was. Uh, it literally is the body and blood of Christ. And we... In a real and mysterious way, we trust what Jesus says in the gospel account uh, on which he was, uh, in which he instituted it. And obviously we trust this, and not, not like the Roman Catholic view where we view it's being transferred into something. We simply trust what God's word says is true. And today we're going to take a look at what benefit do I get in receiving this meal? You know, we get this uh, question uh, somewhat frequently here at, here at our congregation is, you know, how often do should we have communion at our church? You know, uh, there's probably a lot of uh, materials and articles out there of weekly communion. And I think as a pastor, I think weekly communion would be a great blessing uh, because part of it is understanding what are we doing? And, and, and some might say, well, um, if I have it more often, then it's not as meaningful. Well, I, I don't mean to humble you, um, but if we understand what communion really is, it's for you, but it's not about you. In other words, how often I have it doesn't change what it is. So when, when Christ said on the night that he was betrayed, this is my body, this is my blood, given and shed for you, we trust that his body and blood would be shed on Good Friday. And that body would be raised from the grave on Easter Sunday. And today he stands ascended. And we might ponder, well, how can that be? What, what actually are we receiving? Well, we're receiving the body and blood of Christ like Jesus told us. And we also hold to the confession of our faith that Christ lived, he died, he rose, and he ascended for me and for you. And that is a great blessing. So what benefit do we get? The words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins shows us that in the sacrament of the altar, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. A few years ago, uh, we had a vicar here. Uh, his name was uh, Craig Waymeyer. He's Pastor Waymeyer now. I think he. I think uh, I, I'm pretty sure he still serves his his church in Saint in the St. Louis area. And uh, I remember that uh, he he challenged our staff and some of our congregation in a sermon. And I remember the the thing that he shared was he goes I un I don't understand why Lutherans when they come and take communion at the rail or the Lord's table, and they leave the rail. And they act like they just were at a funeral. It's part of our piety to be to be uh, come to the rail in silence and to leave in silence and to silently meditate to ourselves. Uh, whether it's in the pew before uh, communion or after receiving communion, we we share that. But he thought, and and I think he makes a pretty bold and good point, is we should be jumping for joy after we receive. Uh, the body and blood of Christ at the rail and go back to our pew like we have received the best gift that God could give us. And, and I think he's right uh, in that. I think too often our, our uh, traditional piety gets in the way. And, and uh, you know, my church was, you know, the only thing you really heard other than him singing. And even in our church here, sometimes just a light playing of the organ when the hymn is finished and, and people are generally silent. But 
we should be joyful that we received uh, the good news of salvation through the gospel and the means of grace through this Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, on our lips as we have been forgiven and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And we receive that in our hands and we receive it in our mouth. In the sacrament, we receive a great treasure. It's the forgiveness of our sins. Our Lord's word assures us of that very treasure. It is passed along and made our very own when we receive his body and blood. You know, uh, I, I think we, we do ought to have a conversation as a congregation and, and talk about how often uh, should we, we offer this. Uh, right now it's twice a month and that's a good practice. And, and having it every Sunday is a good practice too. And, and I know that life has changed so much. When congregations in, incorporated a first and third uh, practice of Holy Communion, everybody was able to come to church every week. So most people were guaranteed to receive it twice a month. You know, so much has changed in our culture. You know, some people are required to work on Sundays or, or Saturdays. And, and some people, you know, have uh, cultural things that take us away and even health. And, and so, you know, we all have different reasons why we ha aren't able to come to church as regular as we want. We know that it's good and we shouldn't neglect the gathering together. But my pastoral heart, when I know somebody who comes and it's been a while since they've been here and they come here and it's a non-communion Sunday and then they don't come back for a while. To me, my pastoral heart says, man, I wish it was a communion Sunday where they could have had the the body and blood of Christ. And, and some would say, well, they should know the calendar, but you know, your life gets busy. You know, people get sick, family members go through stressful things. Sometimes we have our own personal struggles where, you know, it's uh, things that we're facing in our job or, you know, kids go, got things going on in school. And uh, I think we're just so committed outside of the home that uh, sometimes we don't even have a opportunity to pause uh, for refreshment and breathe. And what a better way to come into the Lord's house and to receive from Jesus the very gift of sacrifice, of love and forgiveness than his body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Will you join me in a word of prayer today? Lord, I thank you for gathering us together to receiving your benefit, the body and blood of Christ, uh, crucified, risen, and ascended for the nourishment of our salvation that means of grace where we feed on the body and blood of Christ in, with, and under that bread and wine. And I pray that we would always take that gift with such awesome appreciation that you remind us that we're forgiven, we're loved, and we're sent out to be your hands and feet. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus.